Hi, everybody. This is Virginia Milner back with another episode of Jewelry with Jen. Coming to you for the DeKalb County Library. And I have a, I always say they're special, and I always say it's something I, I've been wanting to do for a while, but it is. I, um, my favorite season of all time is autumn, and it is right around the corner. I've been kind of chomping at the bit to do something that represented all of the glorious colors that are fall. So I decided that I would do um, a nice uh, little, it's not a charm bracelet, but you're gonna be dangling a lot of different colored beads from your, your, ba your, bra your bracelet base that you are going to make. You're gonna make every part of this bracelet. And it's in all different, wonderful, fall-inspired colors. And it's a real mixed media of um, beads. I have wooden beads. Uh, I, I have some pine wood and some painted wood, some acrylic, uh, carved acrylic beads in here, uh, some metal copper, bronze beads, uh, crystals in different colors and, um, and shapes. And we're going to, I have, even have some little leaves in there. I've got some, some acrylic green, those little green acrylic leaves in there. And I have some uh, uh, bronze copper leaves. So I've got pretty much everything in there. Oh, and the chips, I have some little semi-precious chips in here, some coral, and ju just a bunch of things, obviously. <laughs> but I did that because I wanted you to see that you don't really need to use a particular type of bead or, or um, shape or anything like that to make a, a bracelet like this. It's uh, going to be, uh, I wouldn't call it a hodgepodge because it was pretty planned. Um, but I just wanted you to see that you can make something really this pretty with all different kinds of beads. Uh, and I wanted to do it in the fall colors. So that's what we're going to do today. And the key to this one is you're going to make every single component that that um, puts that brings this uh, bracelet together. We're going to make the links. We're going to be making coiled links. I can get a good picture of that up there. So these links right here, you're going to make them. You're going to make the split rings that connect the links, and you're going to be making your own head pins to put the beads on. And the reason I wanted to do that is oh, number one, I'd like to show you how to um, make things as particularly with wire. If you're gonna use wire, I like for you to be able to make everything. Uh, this particular bracelet I made in cut with um, bronze wire and the wire itself you can find in different stores like Michael's and Joann's and AC Moore. And I wanted to make something that is uh, really accessible to everybody so that you don't have to order it. The wire you can probably get in one of those um, basic stores, but to get the head pins that you need to match it the, in the color that you need and the split rings or the jump rings and uh, any other uh, findings that you need to put it all together. It's kind of hard to get the colors to match properly. So if you're able to make your own components, the world is your oyster. So I'm going to show you how to make everything. I'm going to make you, show you how to make your spa spacers and links, your split rings, your head pins, and your clasps. Everything will be made out of this wonderful 20 gauge wire. You can use 20 gauge art, artistic wire or craft wire. <clears throat> Either one of them will do just fine. And I did this one again in um, bronze. The one today I'm gonna do, we're gonna make it in copper. And uh, just, just, so I had, just so I have two different ones for myself. <laughs> So we're, we're going to use bare copper wire. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of twisting and, and um, 
coiling with that. So I find that bare wire is much better to use than something that's plated or has some kind of a coating on because you can strip that coating off. So um, I'm gonna be using bare copper wire for this. We're gonna be making every single bit of our, our bracelet, all of our components. So let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is your pliers. You're gonna need your basic pliers, your round nose, your square nose, or chain nose, either one's fine, and your uh, cutters. Now, let me tell you, these things come in a very basic kit. They come in a starter kit. You don't need to buy anything specific or anything different or special uh, to do this particular uh, uh, project. And usually your starter kit is what you can use for most projects, unless you're, you're branching out into something that's a little more um, advanced. This is, the, these uh, three pieces will get you a long way. The other thing that you need is a ruler to measure out your wire. And again, you're going to need 20 gauge wire. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to make is how uh, is these links. These are the things that are going to be linking your bracelet together. And you want to measure your wrist if you, you don't already know what size your wrist is. Mine is seven and a half, so I need to decide how long I want my links to be, and, um, how, and that'll determine how many I need, or how many I need will determine how long they should be. Either, either way works. So each one of my links in the bracelet that I've already made here is approximately seven eighths to an, uh, to an inch long. And then with my uh, split rings that are hooking everything together, those uh, bring it up to at least a good inch per link. So I need at least seven of those uh, for my bracelet, for the base of my bracelet. And then my, um, my uh, what am I thinking? My clasp will bring it all together. So. So I've got about seven inches, seven and an eighth inches going around, and my class can be about three quarters to an inch uh, long in order to give me the extra that I need in order to hook my bracelet and fasten it. So just take your measurements. Um, one of the good things about this is you can start to put the components together then put it on your arm and decide whether or not you need more components or not. Uh, but anyway, go ahead and take your measurements, determine how many of your links you need, and let's make our first link. So the first thing that I want is enough to make my wrapped link. And for a 7 8 to 1 8 inch link for me, it takes about 7 inches of wire because, I'm, of course, I'm going to be coiling uh, wire all the way across here. So I'm going to use seven inches of wire to start my coil. So I'm going to measure that out. Got my seven inches. Grab my round nose pliers and the first thing I'm going to do is make a, the loop for the end. So the first thing I want to do is take my wire and right there on the end, I'm going to go a little bit back from the tip of the wire and I'm going to make a bend. I'm going to bend the wire, wire uh, kind of at a right angle so that I have a little bit of a tail sticking out there. Then I'm going to go back in on the long end of my wire and I'm going to slide it down. In my case, I'm going to go about three quarters of, a, of the way down my wire because I uh, want my loops to be a good size. And what you can do after you make your first one, in order to determine where to go down your wire for your next one and the one after that, just uh, test it out. Just put the one that you've already made on your wire and on your pliers and that'll determine where you want to go down your pliers for each one. So I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to slide my wire down about three quarters of the way down my pliers like so, so that my 
small, that little small ledge is resting on top of my pliers. And the other half of my jaw of my pliers is um, on the side where the long wire is. And I'm going to rotate my pliers away from the tip of that small little edge. So I'm going to start making a loop. Let me go as far as I can go until I can't go any further. And then I'm going to open my pliers up, rotate them back, and keep going until that little knob is past the long edge of wire. So there's my long expanse. There's that little nub that I had, and it should look something like that. And then I'm going to go back in with my pliers tip, and I'm going to turn that little knob down until it's resting horizontally along with the long wire. So there that is. It's just running down the length of that long wire. Then I'm going to measure, because I want about half an inch of distance is what I have from loop to loop on my bracelet, on, on my link. You can determine, again, how long you want yours to be. But this first one I made, it has a half an inch expanse from loop to loop, from the bottom of one loop to the bottom of the other loop. So I want them to kind of as, get as close to matching as possible. And again, this is a very organic piece, so it does not have to be perfect. It's entirely up to you. You are the artist. You decide. So I've got my half an inch of space. I'm going to put the tip of my pliers right there where my finger is to mark off my half inch. And I'm going to bend my wire back. And notice the bend of my wire is going in the same direction as the flat top of my loop, like that. OK? And then I'm going to put my pliers in again about 3 quarters of the way down my wire, 3 quarters of the way down my pliers on the long edge of my wire. And I'm going to bring the wire across my pliers and over to meet the short edge of wire till I can't go any further. And you can see I have about uh, 3 quarters of a loop. So now I'm going to go the rest of the way around. I need to rotate my pliers back and close up my loop. And there's my, there's my loop. And then I'm going to wrap this long tail of wire down the expanse of, oops, I'm not off camera. I'm going to wrap this long tail of wire down the bar that I have here on my link. So you can do this a couple of ways. You can go ahead and put the, um, put the pliers back in the loop and then wrap this around. Or you can hold the, the loop on the side and wrap it around, whichever works for you. Either one is fine, whichever works. So I'm just going to start wrapping that long tail of wire around the little bar on my link. And again, this is a very organic piece. So your, your links don't have to, your wraps don't have to be perfect or, or any type of size or shape. As you can see from this one, it's all very, very, very um, uh, messy. I'm going to use the word messy. And it's up to you. It's a, I mean, whatever your aesthetic is, if you want perfectly wrapped uh, loops around here, then go for it. And the biggest thing that I want to make sure of is that I completely enclose that little uh, tail of wire that I had at the beginning. Now, once you get to a certain point, you can always use your fingers. You can get rid of those pliers and use your fingers to hold it. And just keep wrapping until that little tail is completely covered all the way down my, my link. There we go. And then I have a decision to make. I can either, I'm going to push some of those together because I see a little space in there. 
and even though it's not necessarily that important, I'm going to close it up. And I'm going to wrap this one more time around. Now you can decide whether or not you want to just cut the, cut the uh, tail off or keep wrapping. A little space, scrunch it together. I have a little tail here. I'm going to give it another wrap or two, whatever I can do with it so I don't have to cut my wire off and waste it. And if you have even more wire at the end, you can go back down and until you uh, don't have any wire left. I'm just going to finish it off up here. And then I'm going to take my pliers. And I'm going to push that tail down until it's nice and snugly fitting against the other coils of wire. So that it can't catch on anything. My nice fall cool weather sweater or my skin, heaven forbid, don't want it to scratch. Let's get it in there nice and close. And again, this is why I like bare copper because I can squish it. I don't have to worry about stripping my wire. And I like to test it out with my finger to make sure there's nothing that's going to scratch me. And there we go. There's my link. Now I want to show you something because you want both of your looped ends to go to be get facing the same direction. First of all, I, I'm going to straighten this up a little bit so that it's not leaning off to the side. So it's leaning in that direction. I'm going to take the tip of my pliers and just pull it back until it's straight. The other thing is you want your, your uh, loops to go in the same direction. This is going, this one's nice and flat and the other one's facing down a little bit. I don't know if you can notice that. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to take my hands or my pliers, either one, and I can just grab each of the loops and twist until they're both facing the same way. Now, there we go. Perfect. All right, so that's how you make your links. Now I want to show you how to make some split rings because we want something, you can use jump rings to attach, but if uh, just for a little bit more security, I like to rotate it uh, at least one and a half times, my ring one and a half times, so that I can make sure that nothing's, the, the ring's not going to open up and fall off. And for this, I can use 20 gauge wire. You can also use 18 gauge wire. I'd especially um, advise 18 gauge wire if you're making um, jump rings. Either that or you can take a little rubber mallet like I have here and pound it out a little bit so that it strength strengthens the wire. The more you work with the wire, the stronger it gets. So you can do that or you can take your pliers. Again, if you have bare wire, you don't have to worry about this and I can just work it over a little bit until it starts to strengthen. And then, now we're going to make our split ring. You only need about an inch of wire to make your, the split ring that I want to make, because I want to make mine about the same size as this. So three, three quarters of the way down my wire. And I want it big enough, maybe a little bit bigger. I want it big enough so that I can dangle a bunch of, um, I can put a bunch of dangles on it. So it has to be a decent size to accommodate all of the loops that are going to be going inside of it. So I'm going to use about an inch or so of wire in order to make uh, my split ring. An inch and a half will be enough for you to work with to make your split ring. Um, but one of the reasons that I would suggest that you work directly from your spool is because once you've got your split ring, what happens to that other half to a quarter of an inch? You have to cut it off and that's a waste. And what are you going to do with a quarter of an inch of wire? Throw it away. So instead of that, I'm going to just work directly from my spool. Just know that it takes about an inch per, um, jump, per, 
first split ring just for knowledge and if you have any um, little pieces of wire that you want to use up you can use that um, but if you can work directly from your spool or of wire it's it's better for saving you don't have to be as wasteful so anyway come back down on that off of that soapbox what i like to do a little hack that i have is to take the tip of my pliers and give my wire a little bend and then that way it's already start the curve has already started and when i finish with my ring i won't have an edge that's a point that's sticking out as much so i'm going to go down about uh three a little more than three quarters of the way down my my pliers because i want a nice big split ring and i'm going to start rotating i've grabbed it so that this little ledge part is right in the center of my pliers. And I'm gonna start rotating until I have a nice loop. Now the edge, the tip of my wire that I'm rotating should be going in the direction of the tip of my pliers. And the wire that's being wound should be closer to the hilt of your pliers. So once I have my full rotation, I'm gonna go back another half rotation until I have one and a half rotations. Like so, I don't know if you can see that, the light is blurring things a little bit. I'm trying to figure out how I can block the light off so you can see. Okay, so I've got about one and a half rotations there. You may be able to see that. And once I get to one and a half, uh, one and a half times around, I'm going to cut my wire. I like to open it up a little bit. And cut. And that way I don't have to worry about cutting the part that I don't want to cut. I just want to cut the wire that's furthest away from the loop. And then there is my split ring. There we go. Nice split ring. One and a half times around. And I can go in, I like to slide it back on and then go around the wire with my pliers make sure everything is in a nice circle no end sticking out make sure that the tips are conforming to their circular shape and there we go all right i'm gonna make one more of those too again i'm going to make a little bend in my wire a little curve just to get it started i'm going to go down three quarters of the way and start my my loop developing into a coil again the tip of my um, wire should be going out towards the tip of my pliers when i have one and a half rotations i'm going to cut it and i don't cut it down here because then i'm going to have that <clears throat> straight edge of wire that I have to deal with. I would rather open my loop up a little bit and then cut it where it's curved. And then you can see where it's kind of curved here. All I have to do is close it back up and I'll take my pliers and just squeeze it just a little bit until the wires, uh, until the coils, coils are all nicely lined up again. And there is my split ring. Go in there, get those ends down so that they're nicely lined up against the rest of the, the coil. Nothing sticking out. 
and there we go. Okay, so I have two coils and my link that I'm going to put together. And of course I have another one. <laughs> there we go. And what I'm going to show you now is how to make the jump rings, not jump rings, how to make the pins for your beads, your head pins. Okay, so I'm going to put all of that to the side. I'm going to grab some beads here and I'm going to show you how to make your very own decorative head pins. Now, one of the reasons that it's good to know how to do this is because you can have, I have these um, acrylic carved beads that I'm using. And if you can see this, the hole in this is massive. I mean, it's almost as big as the size of this seed bead. It's really big. Your standard traditional head pin is not gonna work with that. It's gonna slide right off. Even an eye pin might slide right off of this because the hole is, it's, it, it, you know, your large hole beads are very large hold. So you want to make something special to fit a bead with a hole this size. So what I'm going to show you how to do first is make a spiraled head pin. We're just going to make a nice little spiral that will fit the bead and keep it. From, from slipping through. Okay, so I'm gonna take the tip of my pliers. Again, you can work directly from the spool or you can cut off. I would give myself whatever the amount of the expense of wire you need for however many beads you're putting on. You have to measure that first. So if I'm using an inch of uh, beads, I think this is about an inch and a quarter. Maybe I'm gonna put on about an inch or so of beads then I need about an inch for my raft loop because we're making a raft loop to attach. And then give myself a good inch and a half for my spiral so I can have a decent sized spiral. So I'm going to give myself an inch and a half, another inch, three and a, about three and a half inches. And just to avoid losing too much wire, what I'm going to do, because I know I want my coil to be a good size, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make my wrapped loop, and then I won't have extra that I have to cut off. I can just use everything that I have for my spiral. So I'm going to make my wrapped loop. What I want to do is go down about an inch on my um, wire, grab it with the tip of my pliers and bend my wire until there's a long horizontal length and, um, I mean, uh, a short horizontal length and a long uh, vertical length. length. Oh my goodness. And then I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna give myself about a half, because I'm going over a split ring, I need to make sure I have plenty of space for to accommodate that. So I'm going to go about a half, uh, halfway down my pliers. I'm going to take the short edge and I'm going to wrap it over my pliers and back down towards the long length of wire. I'm going to stop when I'm when both of them are horizontal. I'm going to open my pliers up, rotate them back until they are, it, the, the pliers are horizontal with the loop. And then I'm going to bring that loop back and up until I have a full loop. And there we go. Now I'm going to start to wrap my loop. Or you can stop there and put your ring on. There's two ways that you can attach this. You can stop before you, you, make, you get your um, loop completed and put the ring on, or you can open up your ring a little bit and thread it on. 
Either way works. Either way is fine. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and make my complete loop. Again, I can wrap this from in with the pliers inside of the um, loop, or I can grab it from the uh, face of the loop and I can wrap. Either one works. Whichever is easier for you to manage is fine. So I'm going to wrap that short tail around the long wire. You just need about two wraps. And I just have a little tiny bit left here. So I think I'm going to just continue to wrap it until there's no more left, no waste. And I'm going to push that end down, that little tip down, so that it doesn't catch on anything. Just push it down until it's right there beside the other wires. And now I have a little bit of space in between these wires and all I have to do is take my pliers and squeeze it together. So it's nice and neat. Okay, now I'm gonna put my beads on. So here's the big bead is going on the bottom. The, I've got a nice little leaf here. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to put my leaf on. That's going to be on the top. And let's see. I'm going to go light to dark to just show the evolution of color. So I've got a nice goldenrod seed bead, a hyacinth colored orange, <laughs> orange seed bead, and a red crackle bead. Oh, yeah, just all kinds of beads here. I can find the hole in this. Where are you? There it is. And my nice big carved acrylic. And isn't that lovely? Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make your spiral. I'm going to start by bending this back a little bit. Again, at right angles. And then I'm going to grab the tip of my wire with the tip of my pliers. And I'm going to make a loop. And I'm going to continue my loop until I have wire wrapped, uh, until it's, it's not quite like a coil because I want the wire to be on top of itself. So I'm just wrapping the wire around itself. Until I have a coil. And so what I'm going to do after I get to a certain point, I can switch to my um, square pliers or you can use your round pliers, whichever is better for you. And I'm going to keep coiling. Just keep wrapping that wire around itself. to get my spiral. And you can make this um, as, you can make it an open spiral or a closed spiral. I'm going closed and tight. And now I'm gonna take this and make a little bit of an adjustment so it's centered a little better. And then finish it off. There's my spiral. There's my head pin. That bead's not going anywhere. Awesome. And I have my first dangle. Yeah, I like it. You can't really see the orange on this camera. This one's actually orange. It doesn't show up that way. Anyway, now I'm going to show you how to make another type of head pin. I'm just going to show you a knotted one because I have one in here uh, just with a little knot on the end. I have one somewhere. Well, anyway, that's what we're making. There it is. So this just has a little knot on the end, a little wrapped, uh, looped knot. So we're going to do that one 
that can go to fit any bead pretty much. It's just a bit, this is just a way to avoid having to buy those pins. And another thing is that even if you do find those pins on the floor or in the store, they come in small packages, maybe 10, a dozen, something like that. And as you can see from this, we need a lot more than that. You'd end up buying two, three packages. And why do that if you don't have to? So my knot is going to take about an inch. My wrap loop is going to take about an inch. And then um, add those two inches to however, whatever length you need for your beads. And that's what you need. I'm going to go with about three because I think I've got about an inch worth of beads. So there's my wire. And what I want to do is make a, a little coil. I want to coil it around twice and then slightly beyond the two coils. So I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch or so down my pliers. Doesn't have to be too big. I'm just making a small coil and I'm going to start to rotate until I have a loop. And then the tail of my wire should be going in the direction of the tip of my pliers and continue rotating until I have two uh, rotations. There's the tip. I have two rotations. I'm going to go slightly back past the tip and stop. And so now what I'm going to do is bring the tail of my wire around, just loop it around, and bring that tail through my the, the coil. Just bring it up through the coil. Like so. Just bring it around and I'm going to pull it through until I have a nut. And you can use your pliers for this to pull it through. It just depends on how small you want it to be. That's pretty. And I'm going to keep pulling until I make it a little bit smaller. It depends on how big you want your knot, how big the hole is in the bead that you want to um, hold on, on your pin. It's entirely up to you. But there is my little knot. Get rid of the lights so that's not all glary. There we go. Grab my beads. Oops. Ah, there we are. And this is going to be my second dangle. And now I can make my wrapped loop. I have plenty left. I have more than I need, actually. I wish I had another bead to put on. Do I? Can I find another bead around here somewhere? No, come on, that bead. Here we go. So I'm going to put this nice little crystal on, this little topaz crystal on there. Oh, cute. Okay, now I'm going to make my wrap loop. So I'm going to grab my wire with the tip of my pliers. I'm going to bend my wire back like so and slide my, my um, pliers down about halfway down my, down my pliers, my wire about halfway down my pliers. I'm going to make my loop. Now this one, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put this one on the ring before it's closed. So I've got a nice loop here. I've got the tail of my wire. I'm going to take my split ring and I'm going to slide it on there until it's down in my loop. Oops, it fell out. Slide it on until it's down in my loop. There's my ring, there's my loop, and now I'm going to wrap it. Now, obviously, 
well, maybe not so obviously, when you have something in your loop, you don't want to try to put your pliers in to wrap because it's in the way. So I'm going to put my pliers on the side of my ring and wrap it. Right there between the pliers and the bead. And there we go. I'm going to finish it off with my pliers. And again, you can take creative license as to how messy you want your wrap to be or how neat and tidy you want it to be. When I'm pushing down this end, I have to be very careful because I just popped a nice little crystal bead on here, a little crystal bicone on there, and I do not want to break that if I can help it. So push that end down. I don't want to scratch. I don't want to break. Nice and easy. And there we go. So I have the dangle. hanging off of one of my split rings. Nice. Now let's put it all together. So I have the dangle on my split ring. I'm going to take my split ring and open it up a little bit and I'm going to attach one of my links. Slide that on there. all the way around until it drops down in the center of my link, my loop. And then there's my link. I want to just close up close up my loops here so that they're all nice and side by side. My coils should be closed. I'm going to just tap that down so that my coils again are nicely closed. So there's my link, there's my coil, my split ring, and there's one of my dangles. So let's attach this other one to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to open it up again, and again, you can put everything on at the same time and save yourself from having to open and close. So just slide it open a little bit. Slide on my link. Get it completely on there, make sure that it's all the way down in the circle of my split ring. And push those loops together so that the coils are nicely, nicely closed. And so there is the first part of my little my little bracelet. I'm going to add this other one. Now you can put as few or as many on as you want. I'm going to go ahead and put these two on the same split ring. Or you can put one on one split ring or one on each split ring if you want. If you don't want as many dangles, you can just put one on each split ring or you can put two or three on each split ring. I think I put three on each of these. Okay, so each of my split rings on this one has three dangles. You can also put, put them on your, your, link, your link loops. So you can really fill it up so that it's um, nicely, just, just packed, jam packed with dangles if you want. You can use every bit of loop space to put your dangles on, just make sure that it hangs nice and free and doesn't get too bunched up. 
But it, again, this is artistic preference as to how much dangly stuff you want going on. So I can put another one there, or I could just do one on each one. It's entirely up to me how I want to do it. I'm going to attach this one more on here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up a little. I'm going to slide my dangle on. And I'm going to slide my length on. And I'm going to close up my coil. And there is the second part my bracelet. And then over here, I can put another link. So we are well on the way to our bracelet. As you all know me, <laughs> you must know that I have some of these already prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and put them together and assemble them. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the um, clasp that we're going to make because we're going to make a really pretty wrapped clasp like this Where? like this yeah so i will be back in a very jiffy okay so here we are with our bracelet all composed Is that the right word? That doesn't sound right. But anyway, all my, my bracelet is all put together. So now what we're going to do is make our clasp. And again, we're going to use 20 gauge wire. And I'm going to use a, what size V do I want? I'm going to, these are all nicely sized. So I think I'm going to use a nice six millimeter crystal. I want a wooden bead. I think I'm going to go with a crystal. I'm going to make a, use a nice six millimeter crystal. And what color do I want? I think I'm going to use this Topaz Rondell. Yeah. So I'm going to go with six millimeters. Now, in order to make this um, wrapped clasp, I'm going to need about three and a half inches of wire. Actually, I'm going to give myself, no, not three and a half. I'm going to need about uh, four and a half inches of wire, but I'm going to give myself five because I want to make it a pretty a decent size. And if I don't uh, want it that big, I can always cut off what I don't want. But since I'm, if I was only using um, four millimeter bead, a really tiny bead like, um, do I have one here? If I was just using a small bead, I would use about, three to four inches of wire in order to get this effect. And it depends on the size you want your um, shepherd's hooks to be and the size you want your wrap to be in the center. That will be determined by how big you want your complete clasp to be. If you have, if you're in what your say, let's say your wrist is eight inches and you your finished bracelet now has seven inches of um, beads on it it's got you know, the, you've got a circumference of about seven inches or so you want to give yourself at least a half to an inch um, to be able to fasten your bracelet because if you make it exactly the size of the size of your wrist you won't be able to um, get your bracelet fastened so give yourself a half to an inch, depending on how much movement you want in your bracelet. 
if you want it nice and tight, you don't want it as big um, as far as your clasp is concerned. But I'm gonna give myself five inches of wire. Again, I can cut it off if I don't want to use it all. And I've seen this done. I'm gonna give uh, Yvonne Williams a shout out. I saw Yvonne Williams do this on YouTube and it was so neat. I just loved it. Anybody who knows me knows how much I love an S, S clasp. And um, she showed how to make a um, S clasp with a uh, bead in the center and I just fell in love with it. So the way she does it is she makes her shepherd's hook on one end, puts the bead on, then makes the shepherd hook on the other end, and then does the wrap. I have not had very much luck with that because one end ends up longer than the other end. Then I have to readjust my shepherd's hook and I don't wanna have to mangle my wire that much. And especially if you're using silver wire, um, sterling silver or something like that, you don't want to be messing around with your clasp that much. So what I like to do is put my bead on first, do my wrap second, and do my um, shepherd took last, which is the exact reverse of what she did. So I've got my bead in the center of my wire, and I'm going to take one end of my wire, and I'm going to bring it over to the other side, and then I'm going to, it's hard to see with my fingers in the way. I've got it over on the other side and I'm going to wrap it around the bead and bring it back to where it was in the beginning. So now I've got a lot, nice little wrap around my bead. And I'm gonna bring the other wire, the, the usual way you think to do something when you're wrapping around from both sides is to go in opposite directions. But you're going to bring this wire back the, the same way that the other one went. So I went around this way for this one. I'm bringing this one back. And it's going to seem like you're unwrapping, but you're not. You just want to bring this one back around the other wire. And now I have sort of a little pretzel going on here. And I'm gonna decide, I didn't mean to pull that apart, sorry, um, how big I want that initial loop to be. So it's gonna, got a little S shape going on there. So now I'm back on that side. Each one of them is on their opposite side again. I'm gonna bring that wire over to where this one is and then run away from it. <laughs> to the other side with the other wire. And I'm just going to keep going until I have about an inch of wire left to make the size shepherd's hook that I want. So that's where I'm going to stop. And they're pretty close to the same length, which is unusual. That's a, like a catch, as catch can for me. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so I've got about an inch, a little, just, just under an inch, I think it was. And here I've got just over an inch. So I'm pretty close to the same. So I'm going to cut this little tip off until it's down to about the same size as the other one. And now I'm going to create my shepherd's hook. So the shepherd's hook, you want to make kind of an S shape, kind of a, uh, I don't like to use the word snake, but it's kind of snaking around. So this, this particular one has been going, looping around this way, and I'm going to bring it up, and then it's going to go around the other way. So what I like to do is put a curve where my shepherd's hook is going to be. And then on the other side, it's going in the other direction. It's curving around and it's going to go up this way. So I put my curve in. So now you can see how that's going to come out. It's kind of 
Whoopie, whoopie, whoopie. I make some, I make some stupid noises on these videos, I know. Anyway, so now what I want to do is make my shepherd's hook. My loop, I'm going to start with a tiny loop on the end. It's going to be going in the, it, this is going up. My loop is going down. That's the easiest way to remember which way to go with your loop. So the tip is pointing up. I want to make my loop going down. Pretty simple. Tip up, loop down. And I'm just going to make a three quarter loop. I'm not going to close it all the way. I'm going to take my pliers, my flat pliers, and I'm going to close it after I have it three quarters of the way made because I want that loop to be tiny enough to go through any loop that I'm going to use as the fastening because this is going to go through this little this little link. It has to be small enough to go through. And if you make too big a loop, it's not going to make it. Okay, so I've got my my loop. I think I mangled it when I was running off of the mouth. Okay, my loop is going down. There's my curve for my shepherd's hook. I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And I'm going to make a pretty decent size shepherd that's hook here. I'm going to slide it all the way, almost all the way to the back of my pliers. Now I call the top of my loop the part that extends out from the wire and the bottom where the opening is. So there's the loop itself. I'm going to put that on what I'm calling the bottom the bottom of my pliers, which is closest to me. And I'm going to bring the bead over the other side of my pliers and roll it around until I touch the head of my loop. And there's my shepherd's hook. Kind of looks like a little swan. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Again, my tip is going up. My loop is going to go down. Grab the tip of my, my wire with the tip of my pliers. Make a three-quarter loop. Once you get it to about three quarters, almost closed in other words, you're going to take your flat pliers or your round pliers. Your round pliers can work too, but they kind of slip on round wire and just close that. Okay. And if for some reason, my, my little loop is kind of off to the side instead of facing down, just take your pliers and twist the wire. This is very malleable wire, so you can just twist it until it's going in the direction that you want it to go. And now, I'm gonna take my round nose pliers, slide my wire down until it's about near, almost to the uh, back of my pliers, just like I did the other one, I want them the same size. And I'm going to take my, my bead and rotate it around, bring it all the way around until it touches my loop. And there's my other shepherd's hook. And then you just adjust it the way you want it to look. Just going to make a little adjustment here. And there we go. I'm gonna straighten this out a little bit. It's going a little more that away. Close that up a little bit. Again, the wire is very malleable, so it'll do what you tell it right now. And there is my my clasp. OK, 
Okay. Now, if you're a little worried about this not being strong enough, you can always tap it a little bit with your pliers. Be careful. There's a crystal in there and my finger. So I'm just going to tap it a little bit on the end. Same on the other side. Doesn't have you don't have to beat it to death. Just work out. And you can also use your pliers a little bit, just kind of tap it. And that'll help, help strengthen the wire a little faster. There we go. There's my clasp. And time to attach it to my bracelet. All right. One of the reasons I love S clasps so much is because you don't have to be right handed or left handed uh, in order to, to get them on. You can put, fasten it on either side and it's the most versatile clasp I think that you can, you can make and use and wear. And there we have it. There's our bracelet. And I think that this clasp just works its way in right in with the rest of the place bracelet. I think it's gorgeous. So anyway, that is what we are doing today. Let's welcome Autumn, give it a big round of, round of applause. It should be right around the corner when this video comes out. And I, for one, am very happy to see it coming. I love it. Favorite time of the year. It gets cooler. You have sweaters. You have scarves. Yay! All kinds of, uh, it's not about trying to um, wear as little as possible. Now you can actually use your artistic um, abilities and create outfits. I love that. And the jewelry is such a big part of it. So this is our tutorial for the day. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I will enjoy wearing my bracelet. Let's see what we can show you. Ah. Yay! I'm going to enjoy this immensely. I am looking forward to wearing this. I'll just start wearing it. It's pretty. So there's my bracelet. Every component made by me. There's my pretty clasp. Can we get a little bit? There we go. Here's my clasp. And we are set for fall. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I think I'm going to do a class class because I want to show you so many different ways to, to make clasps that are so pretty and they don't have to be mundane um, and just functional. They can be just as pretty as the rest of the bracelet. So I think that's coming next. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed it. I can't wait to wear my bracelet and I can't wait to share more videos with you. If we can't be in the classroom, this is the next best thing, but eh, we do what we can. And I am grateful for the library for giving us the opportunity to continue to come to you with, with this and with all that they're doing. So until next time, you will see me again next week. I hope you're having a, a great time with these videos. Please let me know, show me what you make, and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.